I'm about to share a content creator secret with you. Bonus round is the worst card in Ruby Storm. I said it, I spilled the beans, and in this video, I'm going to show you why. This is the decklist that we will be playing today, and in order to understand this decklist, you need to understand why people actually like Ruby Storm. So the first reason is budget constraints. So there's no reserve list cards whatsoever, no CD or traders, no lion's eye diamonds. I don't believe that either of those cards actually belong in the mono red storm shell. That is not just me shilling for a video click, that is just the truth. The second reason is that you get to do sweet things with bonus round. You get to copy your Rite of Flames, your Manamorphose, your Reckless Impulse, uh, Inspired, whatever it's called, uh, the Make Three Treasures, Draw Three Cards card. It's really sweet when you get to copy your spells and do the thing. In fact, some might even say that it's win more. And I think that every content creator that uploads these Ruby Storm videos knows that bonus round is the worst card in the deck. It's the definition of a win more card. And people are like, well, it's so good because you can copy your spells versus counter spell decks and then one will resolve. Bonus round is symmetrical, so that's not actually the truth. In fact, more often than not, I play bonus round and then I have to cast like a Rite of Flame or something to make mana so that way my next spell resolves and then my opponent forces that spell. So now I'm out the mana that I had to spend on bonus round, the card that bonus round is, and then the mana from Rite of Flame. So I'm down multiple cards just to lose to a single counter spell. Bonus round is not good. So today we're cutting that card and instead we're playing three main deck copies of Galvanic Relay. This is what I would actually play if I had to play bonus round at Eternal Weekend. I'm sorry, uh, Ruby Storm at Eternal Weekend. Sorry, I have bonus round on the brain. It just stinks. And this is what I believe is a super competitive list. The only thing that I'm not so sure about are four copies of Cyborg Shattering Spree. So the big thing about this deck is that it can't be a Chalice of the Void on two. It's just impossible. Chalice of the Void on one, you don't really care all that much about. It's only Rite of Flame. Chalice of the Void on zero, it's just Lotus Petal. So because we care about Chalice of the Void on two, I have Shattering Spree. So that way we can make sure that we're able to blow up that spell. The thing is, the most popular Chalice of the Void deck right now is actually Red White Initiative, and that has our kind of Amiria, which we're a little bit weak against, so we really just have the Blast Zone. So I'm hedging for Chalice of the Void rather than our kind of Amiria because there's more Chalice decks in the format or Artifact Prison decks. Lands has Spheres, Chalice of the Void is in Moon Stompy, Trenosphere, stuff like that. So I am choosing to play Sh Shattering Spree today. But the rest of this deck list is what I believe uh, Ruby Storm should be playing. There's a main deck passing flames to make you actually better versus blue decks. Same thing with the Galvanic Relay. Instead of playing bonus rounds that are terrible versus blue, we're playing cards that actually improve our blue matchup because you're going to beat a lot of non-blue decks anyway, just on the power level of Rite of Flame, Seething Song, Jessica's Will, and then these Reckless Impulse effects. You're going to get the job done. You don't need to copy your spells. The Red Shell is actually just powerful enough when you have Ruby Medallion in play anyway. And uh, I feel like I'm becoming a little bit preachy at this point, so I'm gonna hop on in to match number one. If you have any thoughts, comments, questions, suggestions, whatever, put those in the comment section down below. I would greatly appreciate that. But for now, we're gonna play some Magic the Gathering with Mono Red Storm and Legacy. I'll see you in the first match. Don't go anywhere. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsforum.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsforum.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to the first round. We're on the draw against Yuki, who I believe is a blue mage. And here we've opened up a hand with triple reckless impulse effect, but no lands whatsoever. We're going to have to take a mulligan. And this actually seems pretty decent. So we'll keep this and put a seething song on the bottom of our deck. We do need a red mana, but we have ruby medallion. And I think... Just being able to jam those versus the blue deck on consecutive turns is going to be decent. We have a couple of draw steps to hit that red sword. Speaking of which, Ancient Tomb, Ruby Medallion. It's Ruby time. 
and it resolves. You love to see that. Our opponent now plays a Ponder. At the moment, there's 11 cards that I would really like to draw, and that doesn't count something like Burning Wish or Past in Flames, which would both be fine. But we have, oh, they're on Sneak and Show. Okay. Uh, but we also have Reckless Impulse, Ren's Resolve, Galvanic Relay. There's a lot of hits we have here, and that was certainly one of them. So let's cast this Rite of Flame. We're both Ancient Tomb Gamers with a Mountain in play. There's just also happens to tap for blue. They're going to Force of Will, pitching Force of Will. We might be dead here. I could have played the Ruby Medallion. I'm choosing not to. Maybe I'm silly. Lotus Petal. Doesn't matter anyway. We're just dead. They had the turn two with Force back up. Emerald Cool. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if we were ever going to beat that draw. Wow, what a hand. I don't think we're actually supposed to board. I think we just, we're just supposed to resubmit here. Just try to do better. You're not going to beat their nut hands. Game number two, we're on the play. This seems fun. I'm going to lead on the sandstone needle and then just pass the turn. Scalding Tarn, okay. Our opponent has seven cards in hand. Lotus Petal. Let's attempt a Jessica's Will to make seven mana. If they have a counter spell, this is a card that our opponent would certainly consider using it on. And they do. Force of Will pitching a show and tell. Not likely a play our opponent wanted to make there. Land number two, they have five cards in hand. Mana Morphos. I'm going to play my mountain because I don't want to sacrifice this sandstone needle if I don't have. And then we'll cast a Ren's Resolve. They search out a volcanic island. And they brainstorm in response. Our runs resolve is back on the stack. I'm guessing this will resolve. Would be an aggressive card to try to count. We reveal another reckless impulse. Okay, I'm going to cast it. We have a land we can play next turn to replace it. Okay, that's not bad. I will pass for now. We could try again on the following turn. Are we dead? Another show and tell. I'm not going to play the Lotus Petal. Omniscience, we're dead. <laughs> Jeez. And they found the Emrakul. Okay. We are dead. Unfortunate start to this league, but even if you had bonus round, it wouldn't have made a difference here. Unfortunate. We're 0 and 1 with four rounds left to go. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. We are back for the second round. We're on the draw, and I've this hand is so good that we're going to keep this. Video Traders. Grim Monolith, okay. Lotus Petal. Mox Opal. And our opponent plays the One Ring, so this is likely Karn Forge, a deck that Four Shattering Spree would be pretty good against. They have two cards in their hand. They do get to draw one with the One Ring. We'll just play a Ruby Medallion and pass the turn. Hoping that we get to untap. Our opponent didn't draw a card with the One Ring. Weird. Did they not know? Very odd. Mesmeric Orb. Okay, so this is Karn Forge. Some of the older builds used to play a lot of Mesmeric Orb. They have two cards left in their hand. Okay, here's our window. We are milling a card. Galvanic Relay. I did not want that anyway. Okay, so we want to start on a Rite of Flame. Because this is going to give me double red. And then from there we can cast. It's actually pretty interesting. I Like you could back half Bergy. But I think I want to front half her for mana. And then that way I can use Jessica's will as a act on impulse. And now we'll cast Seething Song. And the Bergy will make an additional red. So we get six red mana. We'll play Ren's Resolve. Which ends up being a free spell. Because it's cost reduced one by Ruby Medallion. So it costs one red and then Bergy replaces that one red. Burning Wish. I hear that's a good one. 
Manamorphose. We will make red red. So this is also a free spell that then makes two mana and draws a card. Red red. Another seething song. Mana is not a problem. And now we'll use Jessica's Will to exile the top three cards of her deck, and then we can play those cards. We'll play another copy of Rite of Flame. Tons of red mana at the moment. Reckless Impulse. Firm is nine. So now we can play the back half of Bergy called Harnfell Horn of Bounty. We don't have any cards in hand, though. So that is a little bit of a bummer. That said, we can change that. So we'll cast the Burning Wish. And I could get Past in Flames here. And Past in Flames is probably a card that wins the game. I could also get Reforge the Soul. And Reforge the Soul is interesting because I get to draw a new hand and anything that wins the game flat out wins. And then anything that doesn't gets discarded to the Harnfell. So every card is a free Reckless Impulse. The downside is that it gives our opponent a fresh hand, but I'm pretty sure they're a deck that only interacts at speed. So I think the Reforge the Soul is probably better. Storm is 12. All right, so we will start by discarding this Ancient Tomb, and then we can discard the Galvanic Relay. We don't want that. We also don't want another Ruby Medallion. Discard that. Probably don't need a Lotus Petal, so we can discard that. We have eight mana floating. This Rite of Flame would make five. I think I'll keep that around just for a little bit. There's no difference here between casting and discarding to Harnfell because this is a free spell, but it increases our storm count. So it's actually slightly better to cast these just because we do have to get up to storm 20. And then we'll play our Lotus Petal. A lot of lands on top. There's a chance that if I went for Past in Flames, we actually would have fizzled looking at all the lands that are in exile. And I think I'm free to discard this right. I don't need a bunch of red mana at the moment. Play a Lotus Petal. Let's cast another Runs Resolve, Storm 17. We have 21 cards lost, and in those 21 cards are three copies of Burning Wish. Cast another Reckless Impulse, Storm 18. And there's a pair of Burning Wish. We'll cast it, and that's Storm 19. And as I sign a lot, on cards, this is going to be Storm 20 Grape Shot. You'll love to see it. Pew pew! I like to imagine that's the sound that Grape Shots make. All right, so our opponent misclicked and then was short an additional two cards on their combo turn because of it. I'd feel bad, but you're choosing to play Karn the Great Creator, so uh, I don't. So we're on the draw, and we have a bunch of Shattering Sprees. I think I want to leave one in the sideboard. We can get rid of Galvanic Relay because we're, in, we're not in a matchup where you want to pass the turn. Mesmeric Orb, to me, says that our opponent's playing a build that has main deck Echo of Aeons. So I think we actually want the Leyline of the Void to shut that off. But that makes us at 64 cards, so there's a concession coming somewhere. I don't think you want Jessica's Wills on the draw. Because we're facing a deck that's going to empty their hand on the first few turns of the game. And then they're pretty much only going to be act on impulse after that. So instead, I'd rather have Leyline of the Voids on the draw. And if we don't win game number two, we can reevaluate when we're on the play. So this is a hand that has lands and spells, which is typically fine. But the second Burning Wish is like a mulligan. And then this Past in Flames doesn't have enough juice. So I think I'd rather just take a, a real mulligan here. And this is probably okay. It will bottom the Past in Flames. Is that the right move? It means that the passing flames for the rest of the game will be the bottom card of our deck. I think I'm going to bottom the land. Choose to high roll here a little bit. City of Traders. Grim Monolith. They have four cards in their hand. They're passing. Okay. Right on time, Leyline. Right on time. We're going to destroy the Grim Monolith. Pass the turn. Mox Opal. As Miracle Orb. Well, I did keep passing flames, so that's actually not the worst thing. Okay, so they're going to fuel my past in flames for us. Another Shattering Spree. I actually would have liked that one. So we'll play Rite of Flame. The Seething Song was a good draw because now I can play the back half of Bergy. Arnfell Horn of Bounty. We'll pass the turn. It's a little bit risky if our opponent gets to Karn the Great Creator this turn. But if they don't, we get to discard this Leyline of the Void and Past in Flames and potentially win next turn. 
Looks like they're passing. We're going to mill two. Ah, uh, Ancient Tomb would have been such a good draw. So is that Seething Song. That would have been the win. Runs Resolve. Let's discard this Leyline of the Void. Bergy. Okay. Um, play the Ancient Tomb. Let's discard Runs Resolve. Lotus Petal. So I could cast Past in Flames with a Petal open, which will give me Rite of Flame. It doesn't actually do it. Because what do I do after the Rite of Flame? Cast Shattering Spree and blow up both her permanents? And then I lose Bergy forever? I'm going to discard the Past in Flames. It will make comboing one more mana expensive. All right, so I kind of missed on that. So we're going to play Bergy. And I'm, need to, I'm going to need to get a little bit lucky here. We'll play Lotus Petal. Bergy makes a mana. And I'm going to Ren's Resolve, which is going to cost us one mana and then give us two cards to work with. We'll play the Ren's Resolve. So we have two mana now because of the mana from Bergy. A Rite of Flame would be incredibly good. Manamorphose is also fine here. So we'll cast the Manamorphose. That gives us a mana, so we're up to three mana now. And it gives us a card to discard to the Harnfell. Storm is four. Red, red. Reckless Impulse, that discards. Okay. Still three mana to work with here. That's going to be the ball game. Lotus Petal. Wow, just destroying Carnforge. I love it. Okay, Seething Song. Storm is six. We will now flash back past in flames. Storm is seven. And it resolves. Okay. So from here, it's just a lot of clicking. If you're not into watching lethal grape shots, you can skip ahead. But if you're not into watching lethal grape shots, I'd ask, why are you here at the Epic Storm YouTube channel? Because there's probably something wrong. We'll uh, make some more red mana here. All the red mana in the world. Storm is 10. Okay, guess another Seething Song because we can. And with those both on the stack, we can Manamorphose. I'm just playing in a Mind Break Trap here because our opponent is hit F6. We'll discard this Rite of Flame. Okay, well, I can't, I mean, I guess I could play a third Bergy, but we already have both sides on the battlefield. There wouldn't be a real advantage other than Storm Count. Ren's Resolve. Another Rite of Flame, okay. Storm 15. Let's Shattering Spree and Replicate. And then we'll blow up both of their permanents. We'll play a Ren's Resolve, Storm 17. Another Burning Wish. Reckless Impulse again, Storm 18. Okay, so this is Storm 19, Burning Wish, Storm 20, Grape Shot. Where is it? There it is. This is how we do. All right, well, this has been a pretty quick league so far. We are one in one now. There are three matches left to go after this grape shot is done resolving, but yeah, I mean, these matches have been pretty speedy. Hopefully the rest of this league goes the same way with uh, some more wins. So I'll see you in the third match. Don't go anywhere. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. We are back with the third round. We're on the draw again, and we've opened up a hand with no lands. We're sending this one back. Okay, this seems pretty good to me. I think we keep this and we get rid of one of the two copies of Ancient Tomb. Okay, Ancient Tomb goes on the bottom. We're both on six cards. Misty Rainforest, okay. Volcanic Island into Delver of Secrets. Maybe I wanted that Ancient Tomb. Lotus Petal's a decent draw. We will play a land and pass. Delver does not flip. Misty Rainforest, ouch. 19. We'll draw for turn. And Stone Needle. Let's play that and pass. I'd rather this get destroyed by Wasteland rather than an Ancient Tomb. They quickly fetch here, moving fast. All right, so they're Grixis Delver. They're at 18 life, five cards in hand. We go to 18 ourselves, tie ball game, third inning. Dragon's Rage Chain. Okay. Rite of Flame. Let's attempt a Bergy God of Storytelling. Our opponent has four cards in their hand. 
The Force of Will exiling a Murktide Regent. They put the card on top of their deck. We'll pass. So I'm guessing that this card flips Delver of Secret. And it's another Force of Will. <laughs> okay. I mean, we're still very much in this. So our opponent's attacking for four. We'll go to 12. They have three cards in there. Another land. Let's play that and then cast Ren's Resolve. Cast some Flames and Ruby Medallion. Let's play the Ruby Medallion. Okay, that's Resolve. That's a great sign for us. Channeler did not become delirious on our end step. I, I do like to see that. So if for some reason our opponent did find Delirium here and a Lightning Bolt, that would not be lethal. That's only 9 damage. And I chose to not tap Ancient Tomb because if our opponent had End Step Orcish Bowmasters on tap Lightning Bolt, we could theoretically be dead. So I was choosing to play around that a little bit with this Ruby Medallion. And another Ponder. Okay. They shuffled on the first... Or no, they did not shuffle on the first. Lorien Revealed. Spicy. So this is specifically the kind of matchup that I was talking about where bonus round looks embarrassing. And here we have Past in Flames versus a blue deck that doesn't have Endurance. So I, I'm really enjoying that right now. They destroy our Sandstone Needle. That's fine. We go to eight. Bergie's back. Back again. Okay, so I think we're supposed to start on the Bergy. We just want all the mana we can get. So let's play that. A Force of Will exiling a Seal of Removal. We're getting spicy. Okay, so our opponent has one card in their hand. The worst thing that they could possibly have here is like a Daze. So let's just not play into Daze. And another Rite of Flame. Manamorphose. We'll make Red Red. And another Manamorphose. I like that because it's essentially two cards when we get to flash back the Past in Flames. Or cast the Past in Flames. Love it. I love it so much. Red Red. The Bergmeister. Bergerino. Okay, so I could play the Harnfell for four mana, which means that I'd have four mana floating still. And now I can cast Past in Flames for three. If our opponent has Daze, I can pay for it and then play Lotus Petal. And if they don't have Daze, I can, like, sure. So I could have discarded to the Harnfell. Yes, I'd like to pay. And now they're going to be so sad when I show them Lotus Petal. <laughs> right of Flame. Right of Flame. Let's play the Ren's Resolve. We'll play our land. And now we can Manamorphose, which I love because it gives us cards for the Harnfell. Okay. And we could always flash back the Pass and Flames later for more cards that we discarded. So we will make it so we can cast the top three. Another Jesk as well. Seething Song. I guess I should discard some of these cards that I know that I'm not going to be using. We can play Ruby Medallion, and now these three mana spells will cost one. Discard Seething Song. Our Delver opponent just super dead here. Uh, I guess we can just win the game, if that's what you're in. Okay, and that's game number one versus Grixis Delver. Grixis, Grixis, Grixis. I don't think we're supposed to sideboard. We're just going to resubmit and uh, do the same thing. We're in game number two. Our opponent's taking a mulligan. We have a kind of risky hand here. I'm going to try it, but it could really bite me in the butt. So we have Ruby Medallion and a Soul Land, where our land could be destroyed by Wasteland. If this was a basic mountain, I don't even know if this hand is a keep, because we don't have access to play Ruby Medallion on turn two. Well, we do via Lotus Petal, but not through Daze. So, I mean, there's a couple things that could go wrong here, but we're going to keep it and hope for the best. They did not shuffle on their ponder. We draw a basic. Okay, I like that. So we'll play the needle and pass. There's the wasteland. Okay. Another needle. I love it. Needle, when you get to have it, not being destroyed by wasteland, allows you to play through days, which is just super important. So now on our turn three, we can play Ruby Medallion, just disrespecting days here. Perfect. I'll just pass the turn. Main phase brainstorm. Misty Rainforest, they still have five cards in their hand. Burning Wish. Okay, let's start with a Reckless Impulse. One red floating. 
Ancient Tomb. Play a Lotus Petal. I want them to think that mana doesn't matter. And then we're going to Jessica's Will Tarting them to make mana. Force of Negation. Okay. Thinking how I want to play the rest of this turn right now. So that's going to happen. I, I mean, I, I can't stop that. So the question is, do I want a Jessica's Will to make a single mana here? And I'm not sure if I do. So instead, I'm going to just Run's Resolve with a colorless mana floating. Let's sacrifice the Lotus Petal and play Manamorphose. Red, red. There's a Seething Song. That was a very good find. I could play the Ruby Medallion first, but then that means that the Seething Song can be hit by Daze, and I don't want that. Storm is currently... So now Jessica's Will makes more mana. I'm going to play Ren's Resolve. Another Mana Morpho, so that's free mana back. Another Seething Song. We're set on mana at this point. Jessica's Will, we can play the top three cards. Bergy, Bergy, Bergy. Play Rite of Flame. Cast Reckless Impulse. Burning Wish Storm 15. A Force of Will Pitching Days. That's fine. Burning Wish again, Storm 17. Boom. Take that, Grixis Delver. Get out of here. And we are now 2 and 1. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. All right, match number four. We are on the play, and we're facing Faulted Form, who typically plays Oops All Spells. In order for us to win game number one, even with a fast hand like this, we're going to need them to mulligan into oblivion. So this hand gives us a chance at a turn two, but they kept seven. I'm not liking that. So we're probably just dead here and we'll pass the turn. And we're dead. Yep. I don't think I'm going to let them see what we're playing. We will concede. All right, so we have Leyline of the Void. We definitely want that. We'll board out Galvanic Relay. And then we need one more card. I wonder if it's supposed to be the Past and Flame. Like, this isn't really a value matchup, so maybe we just don't want it. We're on the play for game number two. As much as I would love to keep this hand, we just can't. Like, you have to have Leyline of the Void. No Leyline, we're going to five. I guess we'll keep this, but we might lose just because our hand doesn't do anything. Our opponent has also gone to five. Leyline of the Void. Pass the turn. They have a turn one land. Okay. I think I'm just going to pass for now. Land number two. They still have five cards. Sandstone Needle. We'll send it back. So that means next turn we can, at the bare minimum, cast Empty the Warrens. They have Thoughtseed. Okay. Burning Wish gone. I'm going to regret boarding out that Past in Flames. We will cast Manamorphose. Red, red. We drew the medallion, but nothing to do. We'll have to pass. The ball therapy, they can take our seething song. And it goes. They have four cards in hand. So what they're looking for right now is Force of Vigor. We need to win before they can do that. Maybe I should have held that land in hindsight. Because if we draw a Harnfell, Horn of Bounty, I would like to be able to discard it. Okay, our opponent's up to five cards in hand now. We're just going to send it back. We can't do anything. I'm going to hold this once again. We do have four copies of Bergy in our deck, and I could play Horn and then discard. They drew the Force of Vigor. There's a good chance we're dead now. We drew another land. Okay. I mean, we got till turn eight. The problem was that we just never drew another action spell. So our deck kind of failed us here. They cast a second copy of Cabal Therapy. They named Surgical Extraction. They play Spy. There's the Thassa's Oracle and Dread Return. So they got it. I mean, sometimes bad matchups exist. We're facing a very skilled player. Uh, wasn't really expecting to be Oops All Spells this. So unfortunately, we're 2-2. Two and two. Let's go finish that final match and uh, hopefully with a positive record.
With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pinned comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. The final round of this Legacy League, we're on the draw and I'm going to keep. Our opponent has taken a mulligan. We have six cards. Turn one swamp, lotus petal. Uh oh. What's going on here? The one ring. A lot of that card today. Sure. This opponent remembers the draw card. How unlucky. Heaving song. I'm going to display a mountain and pass the turn. Our opponent puts themselves to 19 with the one ring. They draw two cards this time. Tropical island. Abundant Growth. I believe that they're on the Beseech the Mirror deck that Jax has been championing. It does have Force of Will in it, so that's a little bit scary. Bergy. So I could go Bergy Lotus Petal. I don't think that's going to be good enough because I'm a mana short. So I think I'm supposed to start on Seething Song. And now we'll cast the Bergy. And this does eat a Force of Will. Okay. I will play Burning Wish. And I think we just want to grab Past in Flames here. We'll send it back. Our opponent's now at 16 life. They have three cards in hand. They draw three cards with the one ring. Am I dead? So when you play Ruby Storm, ideally you want to face nothing but fair decks. In this league, this is our third combo matchup. I'm not exactly thrilled about that. We won both matches against fair decks. However, I'm not so confident we're going to be able to be a Beseech the Mirror deck with Force of Will in it. It's going to be a tough ask. And I mean, this should just be lethal. It looks like they have Beseech the Mirror. You go get Guy's Will. You don't even have to count. That's how easy it is. The so Mirror's on the stack. Now you cast Guy's Will. They're going to chain Beseech the Mirrors. I, I mean, I guess you can do that, but you didn't even have to. And there's the guy as well. So now they just go Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual, a pair of Lotus Petals, play the Abundant Growth, Beseech the Mirror into Tendrils of Agony. As simple as that. Okay. Now they cast Beseech, Storm 11, and there's the Tendrils. So we've lost game number one against this Beseech the Mirror deck, and they reveal Force of Will and Address. Yeah, I mean, you had a draw engine on turn one. So, this might be a little bit crazy. I'm going to board in Leyline versus their Guy's Will deck. That's not the crazy part. I think you're actually supposed to board out Bergy God of Storytelling. Our opponent's a deck that has four main deck dress downs and counter magic. So, investing five mana into Harnfell and possibly having to pass the turn isn't what we want to be doing here. And the front half gets shut down by dress downs. So, I'm going to try to play around that by not having it in my deck. Game number two. Sure, so we'll keep this. Leyline goes into play. We have to go Mountain Pass. If our hand made one more mana, we could try to Seething Song, Jessica's Will, Reckless Impulse, Mana Morphos, but we're a mana short of that line. Basic Forest into Abundant Growth. Looking to draw a land here. We did not, so we will play Rite of Flame. Let's cycle Mana Morphos. Red, red. Reckless Impulse. Storm is three. They're going to Force of Will, Reckless Impulse. Okay. Sure. They exile a pond. They play Brainstorm. Looted Delta. Five cards left in their hand. Thoughtseize. So they can see how desperately I need to draw land. Our best draw is likely Ancient Tomb. Another Jessica's Will. Classic. And in situations like these, having Sandstone Needle is a huge improvement over a basic mountain because a lot of the cards in this deck cost three from Seething Song, Jessica's Will, Bergy God of Storytelling, even if it's in our sideboard at the moment, Galvanic Relay, hitting the, that additional mana matters so much. And that's why I like the Sandstone Needles. And you might be saying, why not City of Traders? Well, we're a, that was a good draw. We're a deck that is... How do I say this? Looking to play a longer game, we have eight Reckless Impulses, we have Galvanic Relay. Having a short-term land like that 
can be very punishing. And at least with Sandstone Needle, you get to tap it twice. So we could go Seething Song, Seething Song, Jessica's Will Floating 5. That might not be so bad. I do know that this deck plays a bunch of Foster Storm in the sideboard as well. Let's exile the top three. My bad, Floating 4, I can't count. Burning Wish Relay. Do I just take the Relay? I mean, I could try to Jessica's Will here, but if they counter, I don't get anything. So I think I'm going to just take the Relay for And then we'll pass the turn. Our opponent activates Misty Rainforest. Underground C. Lotus Petal. Lotus Petal. The Ball Ritual. Storm is three. So they can tap the Underground Sea, cast Beseech the Mirror, Storm would be four. If they wanted to Beseech the Mirror again after that, Lotus Petal would be five. Lotus Petal would be six. It would be a Tendrils of Agony for seven. Oh, they boarded in empty. Okay. I was, I was guessing that they were getting the One Ring here. I was wrong. They have one card left. What we're afraid of it being, I almost don't even want to say, but it just doesn't matter. If it's Fluster Storm, we lose. So we're going to just pretend that it's not. Seething Song. Play Reckless Impulse. Right of Flame. This will make three. Another Reckless Impulse effect. Ren's Resolve. We reveal two lands. Okay, let's try the Jessica's Will from hand. Storm six. Cast in Flames. Um, I have no mana floating. That actually doesn't win the game right now. It would next turn. So I could try to spike a Jessica's Will to hit mana. That's my line here. Or I can just take the Galvanic Relay for seven. So the Jessica's Will would have two Rite of Flames and three Lotus Petals as hits. We'll play the Ruby Medallion. And then I think it's just the Galvanic Relay. Okay. Relay for eight. We are not dead to the Goblin Army. At least not yet. We would go to six life. Our opponent asked if I should have played Jessica's Will for the extra card. That is a risky move because if they cast a spell, I fizzle. So I don't believe that's accurate. And that extra card isn't worth risking eight cards off the top. Our opponent played a Tendrils of Agony for one storm. Okay, so we're at four life. This should be pretty easy at this point. Oh, the I didn't realize the Past in Flames was leaving. This is not going to be easy. My apologies. I thought that we had the Past in Flames going into this turn. Ren's Resolve? Uh-oh. This might be it. Ren's Resolve again. We fizzled. Galvanic Relay for eight was not enough. We revealed a whole lot of lands. That's a bummer. Okay. Maybe our opponent was right. So we can draw one more card here and let's see if it was the difference maker. We'll go back for a second. Draw. Did not matter. Okay. So we lost. That happens. Not the end of the world. We went 2-3. So we beat every fair deck and lost every combo deck. Even with Leyline of the Void, it was not enough to stop Whoops All Spells. So if there's a card that you can think of that beats combo decks, like, you know, the Beseech deck, Whoops All Spells, Sneak and Show, I'm willing to hear you out. But... I think Leyline might be our best tool, and it just wasn't good enough. Ruby Storm is not a deck that beats other combo decks. It's really a deck that preys on fair decks, and well, we just didn't face those today. Tough luck. I still think that bonus round is not the card you want to be playing. Galvanic Relay, Past in Flames. Past in Flames looks super good this league. Galvanic Relay was fine. I understand that the one for eight at the end fizzled. Sometimes that happens in life. A draw seven would also fizzled, and most people would consider draw sevens pretty good. So Wheel of Fortune also would have failed there. That's Magic the Gathering, especially when we're playing 16. All right, enough of me preaching and, you know, rambling. Thank you for watching the video. I really do appreciate it. I hope you have a great day. And as always, keep storming. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to support the channel. After you do that, open up our description where you can find all of our social media networks, including our Discord, where you can discuss today's deck in that Discord with me and tons of other combo masterminds. It's absolutely free to join, and it's certainly worth your while.